does it make sense to rig out the retro style Nikon ZF camera for video? Well, small rig has given us that option with the 4261 cage for the ZF. And in this video, I'll try to answer that question or at least demonstrate the possibilities with this cage and video rig components that I have at hand by creating a compact run and gun video rig with the ZF at the center. Now, if anyone makes a nice camera cage at small rig, I rigged my first Z camera, the Z6, using a small rig cage. The 2926B is still available to fit the Z5, Z6, Z7, Z62, and Z72. Now, the Z6 from its launch was touted as a capable video camera. In fact, there was a filmmaker's kit available from Nikon that included a gimbal Atomos Ninja 5 monitor recorder uh, to take advantage of the Z6's pioneering RAW over HDMI, and it included a shotgun mic, etc. Now the ZF can record 10-bit 4K internally. So if that covers your needs, there's no need for an external recorder. So again, is there a need to use a cage? Considering as well that the ZF features eight stops of image stabilization, that definitely helps with run and gun style video production. But is that enough? It's a great help for sure, but handheld, in my experience, it still doesn't eliminate those micro jitters. Now, without going into detail regarding the right lens choice, a wider focal length lens helps in that regard. A camera in the weight category of the ZF, which weighs approximately 630 grams, still to my mind is less than perfect. The solution? more weight. <laughs> yes, within reason, adding weight helps stabilize any camera. So there's my opening argument. Let's look at the small rig 4261 cage for the Nikon ZF. Hi, Ray here with the small rig cage for the Nikon ZF camera. Cosmetically, like uh, all small rig cages and other accessories that they make really, it's very attractive. Different from the L-shape handle for the ZF, which I, I recently reviewed, the grip is not faux leather. It appears to be some kind of resin with a faux wood finish. I noticed this handle does not fit so flush with the ZF's built-in, what should we call it, bump that's on the front. So I don't think there'll be any issues in terms of damage to the ZF skin. It's not a huge grip, but like the L-shape handle, definitely gives more purchase for your hand. The next thing one notices is the little spring buttons on the top of the cage, and these allow uh, the lock buttons on the ZF dials to be depressed, nicely designed, and more importantly, they do the job they were designed for. We also have plenty of quarter 20 threaded holes, ARRI 3816 locating hole, and built-in cold shoe mount. There's more uh, quarter 20 holes on both sides of the cage, and strap slot. On the bottom, we have the main quarter 20 connector screw, as well as a 3816 threaded hole and QD socket. Magnetic wrench with both flathead screwdriver and M2.5 Allen key, and importantly, the built-in Arca Swiss dovetail. Inside, there's a rubber pad on the bottom. Installation is pretty straightforward. Just slide the camera in from the back or cage over the camera and secure with the quarter 20 screw. Small rig recommend removing the D-ring on the right side of the camera before installing to secure that side of the cage with the included M2.5 screw through the camera's strap lug. This secondary stabilization point was imperative with the Z9 cage, for instance. Now that cage was comprised of several parts and the camera, of course, itself was much taller. If you wanna make sure that the cage does not swivel and that all inputs and doors remain accessible, I recommend following this installation detail. Okay. So basic installation is complete. The next thing I usually add is at least one handle, a side handle. And this is where you're gonna get the most benefit. You could add handles to both sides, but if the right side grip is enough, just a left side handle will really steady up this rig. Small rig has a wide range of options. I'll use a NATO clamp version by adding a NATO rail. Some of those come uh, with the NATO handles, but they aren't really that expensive, they're around $15 US. So it's just a matter of adding the handle to whatever side or both sides of the cage. And voila. Now top handle sometimes comes in handy and the threaded holes on the top of the cage accommodate all the usual options. Screw mount, NATO, ARRI locating. That might be all you need in terms of readying the ZF for video production. But you'll probably want to add an external mic, maybe a shotgun mic, 
or perhaps a wireless system like I'm using here. The latter is probably the best bet when you can get away with it. A monitor is also, to my mind, a necessity with the ZF, as with all cameras really, if used for video. Um, despite this camera's flippy screen, um, ostensibly meant for vlogging style, to be honest, I'm not a fan. Without belaboring the point, I'd have much rather seen an articulating screen like the Z8 and Z9, even the older version that we have with the Z6, even when it comes to shooting photos, perhaps especially then. I'll go into more detail in my fuller review of the ZF, but when we're talking video, other than vlogging, the existing screen is really less than optimal. I find it gets in the way, uh, flipped to the side, and it can't be uh, tilted when returned to the back, and it's a bit small for monitoring video properly. I own an Atomos Ninja 5 monitor recorder, which is excellent, but relatively heavy at 12.7 ounces, 360 grams, and there's no need to record externally with the internal capabilities of this ZF. The internal 10-bit H265 in SDR, N-Log, and HLG is great to work with. So my vote is for a small, lightweight monitor like this uh, excellent Lilmon 5.5 monitor from OC. It weighs just 7.5 ounces, 212 grams. It's a thousand nits uh, bright, includes all the exposure tools that I use, waveform, vector scope, RGB, parade, zebras, and especially false color, focus assist. No, I'm not gonna veer off into a full review, just to say it fits the bill when it comes to brightness, functions, weight, and price. It's great for any run and gun rig. Again, I'll include an affiliate link uh, along with those for the cage in the description. In relation to using a monitor with the ZF, I have to mention the micro HDMI. I do wish Nikon could have squeezed in at least a mini HDMI, but the micro is what we have to work with. So we just have to be extremely careful with that port and proper cable management is critical. The ZF doesn't include cable clips as we saw with other cameras like the Z6. I have a whole collection of those I've never used. So there's another argument in favor of a side handle. Not only is it, I think, worth the investment for the stability factor, it provides a great mount for the monitor or mic if you prefer, and it offers the opportunity to reinforce or immobilize cables. The ZF's compact form factor presents a bit of a challenge as it did no doubt to the designers. The Mike TRS and that Teensy HDMI are right beside one another, but I'm able to accommodate both in this setup and then use a Velcro strap around the cable and NATO arm of the handle to reinforce things a bit. Elegant? <laughs> well, it does the job, I think, as well as anything. Definitely better than having that cable sticking out unsupported. Now, as far as power options, I'll likely work with the ENEL 15C battery in the ZF. I haven't run into or <laughs> run out of juice for the relatively short clips that I make with this camera. And the battery compartment is easy to access with the cage in place. I admit the primary SD card is a little bit difficult to grab and the micro SD, well, that's fiddly at the best of times. It's just built in storage really, and I rarely remove it. But back to power options. Small Rig makes the ENEL15 dummy battery, which I use with the Z6 rig. However, the ZF doesn't have the little rubber plug you can push aside to accommodate the cable for alternate power sources. The battery door, that's not something that I want to remove. We'd be getting into a more complex rig that takes this beyond run and gun. So that's what my ZF video rig looks like. Given that I have Nikon Z8 and Z9 cameras, the ZF isn't the first camera really, that I reach for when it comes to video. It's really my travel street camera, and it'll remain that for the most part. But that's my case. If the ZF is your main or only camera, and you want to expand its video capabilities, I think this is definitely worth looking into. What do you think? Would this kind of rig fit with your use case for the ZF? Let me know in the comments. Now, SmallRig sent me this product to review I get to keep it. Otherwise, this is not a sponsored video as such. Despite YouTube's requirement that I disclose, um, I received something of value in exchange for this review. 
but my opinions are entirely independent and no other benefits or obligations ensue. Regular price for the cage alone is $79.90 US. And I'll add affiliate links in the description. If you buy via those links, I make a dime or two at no extra cost to you. But it helps keep this channel afloat. Well, that's it for this installment. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to be alerted to new content. In the meantime, take care. Cheers. We'll see you later.